everyone. My name is Xiao Fang. I am the Senior Program Manager in uh, Data Platform Team in uh, Microsoft. Um, so one of the most popular questions that we have heard from our customer is that how do I actually bring my data in from uh, Postgres server, Postgres database that I have on premise or on the VM to Azure database for uh, Postgres SQL to take advantage of its um, high scalability and also high availability feature. Right? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the solution that we have built to bring your database from on-premise to Azure database for Postgres SQL with minimum downtime. Now minimum downtime means that you can keep your database operational um, while the migration is actually going on. Right? And we'll talk a little bit about the workflow and we'll, I will show you a demo um, a, a little bit later on. Great, let me show you a demo of step-by-step uh, -step, um, how do we get this working to migrate Postgres SQL to Azure Database for Postgres. First step is actually to set up the um, replication for uh, Postgres. So let me do it how, uh, let me show you how I do it. So if I come to um, at the Postgres server where we have uh, the installation for Postgres SQL, um, uh, Postgres SQL engine, now you can see that there is a Postgres SQL config file. Now if you open up this one, which I have opened up here, there are a few settings that you need to do. Now if I, let me, before that, let me actually show you where um, is the documentation to show you step by steps, right? Now if you come to um, Azure uh, Database Migration Service and the uh, migrate Postgres SQL to um, Azure Database for Postgres online tutorial. This uh, site right here will talk about step by step on how do you get started. So we are at the prerequisite step right now. Okay, if uh, we are setting up the replication uh, to enable the online migration. If you actually scroll down, these are actually exactly the same settings that we need to do in the Postgres config file. Right? Set the wall level to logical, set the replication slot, we have some recommendation number here, um, and also the uh, max wall sender um, uh, configuration. Right? So if I go back to the postgres.config file, which I have right here, exactly this is what I have in my um, source Postgres server, right? Wall level equals to logical. Now if you scroll so a little bit down, you will see the uh, uh, wall senders, I have it set to a little bit higher because this is my demo machine and also I have the max replication slot to 50 which is um, a little bit higher because of uh, this demo machine, right? Now, okay, so I'm done with the prerequisite. So the next step is actually coming to a schema migration. Now currently this step is still a manual step. You need to do, uh, here are some samples right here. If you do a PG dump, using a dash s switch this is actually to dump your schema only right if you do a dump from your source server you can just dump a, a schema using a dash s in your pg dump now to import that or to restore that dump you can do a p sql command right here and just import that dump into your target which is over here i have it as a uh, 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 the target connection string po pointed to a Postgres database, um, Azure database for Postgres in, in Azure. Right? Now, so I have done that a little bit earlier on for the schema uh, dump and uh, restore for my target database. I am actually ready to go. So let me actually show you the next step. Um, Now I have done the uh, schema dump and restore a little bit earlier on. So the next step is actually to do a foreign key over here, right? We need to drop the foreign key during the initial load. Um, it will fail during the initial load if you have a foreign key in the target, right? So what we recommend is uh, drop the foreign key and then add the foreign key later um, after the initial load phase, right? This is actually the script that, that tell you uh, that show you exactly uh, uh, how to do the uh, foreign key drop and also add it back later, right? Remember to add it back after the initial load is done. Now I have done all this prerequisite um, schema migration and also the uh, foreign key drop for my target 
uh, database in Azure. Right? So I'm actually ready to go right now to actually start a migration uh, using database migration service. Let me get started. So currently, um, for Postgres, we are enabling it in a CLI format. So that means in the, uh, in the uh, Azure portal UI right now, you will not see a Postgres SQL under the um, source dropdown, right? So, but I will show you how do we do it in a CLI. So first of all, you can uh, enable the cloud shell over here. It will take a few seconds to initialize. looks good. So next step, I just need to set the subscription. Again, I have all this command in the tutorial that I showed you earlier on, right? So let me uh, set the, this is the subscription that I want to use. I have multiple subscriptions. So um, let me set this to uh, this subscription account that I wanted to use, right? Now the next step is to create a project. Let me show you uh, what does it mean by a project. Let me actually cut and paste. Um, uh, this command over here into the command in the shell, in the CLI shell. So uh, a project in DMS means it's a source and target combination that's specifically pointed to uh, the source as a Postgres, right? Um, as a Postgres platform, and your target platform is pointing to Azure Database for Postgres. Right. So after you do this, this is this project is a is a unique combination of source and target. You can also do a MySQL to Azure Database for MySQL as another project, or an Oracle to Azure SQL database um, as as another project, for example. Right. Let me execute this one. Now, perfect. It's already created that. What I like to do usually is I go to the Azure portal, I will refresh here, and I will refresh here, and then it looks like, yes, I the Postgres uh, migration project is already created, right? Now let me do um, the second one. The, the second step is to do an uh, activity. Now similarly, let me actually get the, uh, let me get the command out and I will describe a little bit more what does it, what is included in a activity. Right? Now activity means uh, include the connection string to the source and also to the target. Over here, I'm pointing it to this project name, which I created a little bit earlier on. So the source is Postgres, which we already um, see uh, uh, earlier on. The target platform is Azure Database for Postgres, right? Now, my source is pointing to a source.json file. Let's take a look at the source.json file, right? I have the source right here. The, the JSON file is pointing to the IP address of my source connection string, right? And uh, the password, which I will be uh, enter later on. And this is the username that I am going to use. And this is the database name, right? And the port number. Now, 5432 is the default port number for Postgres. If you have a custom port, um, built in for your database, remember to enter that, right? Now I have a source here. Now um, for the uh, target, I have a target.json file, right? So um, let me show you how does it look like. So the target is uh, pointing to my server name, which I provision in Azure. This is an Azure database for Postgres instance. I have a username right here. I have also the database name that I wanted to migrate, and this is also the port. Now, the third file that I'm going to show you is the option.json file. Now, what does it mean by option? Mainly option right here, that it means the um, database that you wanted to migrate. For today, um, we are pointing it to uh, inventory. You can also have a list, 
right? You can actually have a, a, a string that uh, continue to actually uh, input for the multiple databases. Now save this file, and then you will give a name to the activity that's called run now, right? Now let me, let, let me execute this one. So it will ask me for a password to source. It will ask me for a password to point to the target. Now, great. Let me, same thing, similarly, go back to the Azure portal. I can minimize this for now. And I will be able to see whether my activity is created, right? Perfect. Run now test is already created. Looks like it's already running, right? Now, if you uh, remember the workflow that uh, we just show through, we just show you. Um, so the first step is actually doing initial uh, initial load using um, BCP, right? So this is what DMS is doing, is initializing the pipeline and perform the initial load, right? If you actually um, uh, monitor it for um, the period of like 10 to 15 seconds, um, the pipeline will start showing that it start migrating uh, the first uh, few tables, right? During the initial load time, right? Now you can see that I only have two tables right here. I have a few rows right here. It looks like it's already completed during the initial load, right? Now it, uh, in the status pane right here, it also say that two tables are completed. Um, there's no uh, error in the table, which is actually always good, right? Now, um, and, and the, the pipeline currently, the uh, migration pipeline is still running. Now to simulate um, the, the continuous migration, right? I will, uh, insert a few rows right here. Now, so it looks like the database uh, migration is still running. To simulate the, um, the continuous migration, now that the initial load has finished, I will use a console app to uh, insert a few rows, a new rows into uh, the Postgres uh, uh, source database, right? Um, So this is what I'm doing. This console app is going to um, insert one uh, order at a time into the table, right? It, uh, it will take about, it will create new orders every second. So it looks like the new orders are coming in, right? So now uh, for, remember the pipeline is still running. Let me go back to the portal and, um, uh, and uh, monitor for that one, right? So the full load is done. We will switch it to the incremental data sync tab. Now, if you refresh this one, you should see the new inserts coming in. Looks like the, the inserts are already coming into the orders table name, right? And four of them are actually inserted. If you uh, if I let the uh, console app keep running, it will just keep um, reading the, the wall log files and keep reading the uh, new transactions coming in, right? You can see that there are already nine um, um, applicable um, new inserts get applied, right? And then 10 of them already apply, 10 insert. Perfect. So now what it means is that I have I have pretty much the data catch up right now in the uh, target right here. What I will do is I'm going to stop this uh, uh, insert into uh, the new orders. I am going to um, wait for the final changes to catch up in the target. Looks like the final count is 15 insert right here. right? And I have no more pending changes. Now this pending changes is very important. That means that I have no longer um, new transactions that come in that DMS is still apply or is still applying, right? So that means um, everything is uh, caught up in a target. I am ready to cut over. Now you can see that the, the database migration pipeline also switched to ready to cut over status. Now I can do a cut over right now. So what it means by cut over is I am putting my database into completion mode. Right? And it will no longer listen to um, any new changes that come in through replication. Now, this will take about 15 seconds to, to finish the database migration. And after that, it will switch the status 
uh, migration status to complete. Okay, so if I come back here, um, if I refresh that, is that uh, the the um, the status is completing right now. Um, it will take about um, fifteen seconds or so. Yep, looks like the the database migration it's uh, finally complete. And now you just need to um, go to your application and point a connection string to this uh, the new uh, target right here um, uh, that pointing to Azure Database for Postgres. There you have it. So that's the um, uh, demo on how to migrate from on-premise PostgreSQL to Azure Database for PostgreSQL. And if you have any feedback or um, question, feel free to um, email us at uh, dmsfeedback at microsoft.com. Thank you very much for your time today.